back to Be Creative Stamping and my Spooky Night Suite reveal. If you're just joining me, this project is the very last project in my Spooky Night series. So be sure to visit my Be Creative Stamping YouTube channel to watch the other four projects. I'm going to start with the acetate card box and this box is featured in the 2017 Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog and you can find it at the bottom of page 13. So I've already taken the time to fill the box with caramel. I do apologize for the reflection. I have fluorescent light bulbs right above me and so from time to time you are going to see that. All right, I wanna show you the Spooky Night Designer paper because we're going to be using two different pieces today. So this is the front and back of one designer paper. This is front and back of a second designer paper. And here again, front and back, and we're gonna use this piece for the belly band. This is front and back. This one's front and back and front and back. And we actually are going to cut out a couple of these pumpkins for embellishing on the belly band. All right, so we're ready to get started and I've already cut my designer paper. It's 12 inches and it's two and three quarter inches this way, okay? All right, I am going to wrap the belly band around the box just like this and I'm actually going to put the seam on the top and I will show you why in just a second if we put it in the front or on top we'll be able to hide this seam with um, the different shapes and embellishments that we're going to use and that way you don't have a seam on the back. Now at this point we do want to add our ribbon and this um, striped ribbon is not in the Spooky Night Suite but I just couldn't resist uh, not using it. It was just too cute. I've already taken the time to put a little bit of tear and tape on the ends, okay? And by the way, this is about 12 inches long. And if you don't have this, you could definitely use the um, vintage crochet that is part of the Spooky Night Suite. So I'm going to pull um, the paper off. Keep in mind, there are wires on the outer edges of this particular ribbon. So you may not want to use your paper snips. It could dull them. So I'm using um, just an older pair of uh, scissors that I have. Alrighty, by using that tear and tape, I'm able to stick this to the designer paper and it seems to be sticking just fine. And again, it's overlapping and the seam is in the front. We're now ready to use our layering circles and the stitched shape circles. So let me just show you what they look like. These are the stitched shapes and I did use the largest one and that large one is this uh, pumpkin pie layer right here. That's the largest circle stitched shapes, okay? And then I did use the layering circles and I used the largest scallop one in the collection. That becomes the basic black. And then I also use, let me see if I can find it. You need another basic black circle right here. And so I used this one, okay? And I might be able to give you a measurement. Once you cut them and layer them, you'll be able to figure it out. This one's probably about two and three quarter inches in diameter, okay? And look at my black jewels that have attached themselves to the ruler. All right, so you wanna cut those out with the Big Shot. And once we do that, we're going to start assembling this. And we're going to need Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to use the large ones. And I only want to put them on two sides. 
by doing that, I can place the ribbon between this area, and that way it's less bulk. All right, move that out of the way. Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, so there's the dimensionals, and I'm gonna put them on either sides in the center right there. So it's centered on the designer paper and the dimensionals are here and here. Okay. So the next layer is going to be the pumpkin pie. And I've already taken time to get the dimensionals on here so we don't have to wait. And that's going to go right in the center of the basic black scallop circle. All right, and now we're ready to add this layer, and I also popped it up. So all three layers are getting popped up, all of the circles. And we will center this one as well. So now we're ready to do a little bit of stamping, and we're going to stamp the spooky cat. This does have a coordinating punch, which is awesome. And let me show you one more thing about the designer paper. This sheet of designer paper, you can use the Spooky Cat Punch and punch out the cats. It works perfectly. They coordinate beautifully. All right, so I'm going to need a little Whisper White. And here it is, and then I'm going to need some black ink. I'm using my black memento, but you can certainly use um, uh, the black archival ink if you would like. And since the cat's bigger than the pad, I'm just going to ink it upside down, just like that, and stamp it right here in the center. All right. And now I'm ready to punch out this little guy, if I can get it centered. I'm having difficulty um, inserting the paper, I'm going to show you a little trick. This is a post-it note, and this is the sticky side here. I'm just going to put a little bit um, of the Whisper, Whisper White paper attached to the post-it note. And then I'm going to slide it in, and now I'm able to move this until it fits perfectly. And then I can take that back out and I can reuse the post-it note. So this little guy right here, he is going to get popped up. And so, whoops, that might be too many, we'll see. We'll use them, alrighty. And we're actually gonna park this little guy over to the left side of the circle Okay, and I'm going to put in just so, all right, and then the next thing we want to do are add a couple of pumpkins, so let me show you where they're located, right on this sheet of designer paper, and I actually just cut them out by hand, and I did put post uh, Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of them, and so I'll put this little guy about right here, and then this little guy, they have all different kinds of faces, so you don't have to use the same pumpkins every time. And I'm thinking if, if we put that about right there, we should be good. Okay, let's do a little more stamping. I'm going to need the pumpkin pie cardstock. And this time I'll put trick or treat and I mean, excuse me, this time I'll use Happy Halloween. On the original, I use Trick or Treat. So we'll do Happy Halloween. And I'm going to use the classic label punch this time. On the original sample, I just trimmed this paper. But this is much easier to use the punch. And if you don't have the punch, then you can just trim a little piece of pumpkin pie and stamp on that. I'm going to add a little bit of snail on the back. Here we go, and I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm going to use our vintage crochet ribbon, 
and I need about that much. And let me see where Happy Halloween is. Okay, so this is going to get attached to the bottom of the uh, punched shape. Okay, so that gets stuck there. And then I can trim off the rest. Okay, like I said, these aren't my best scissors, so... All right, there we go. And now we're just going to add um, a few dimensionals. Yes, more dimensionals. And I'm gonna use the minis this time. If you haven't tried these, um, they're the same price as the standard dimensionals. And um, I think you get twice as many, like 700, something like that. And so you'll find these in the annual catalog. All right, I'm going to bring this little guy back in, and we want to get this positioned like so. And I think, I think that'll work. And we could even add some little dots. Actually, we need to add some. These are the black rhinestone jewels. This will be on your inspiration sheet, all of these supplies. Let's give the cat some eyes right here. You know what? I'll zoom in for you so you can see it a little bit better. I'm using the tiniest ones. You get three sizes. Whoops. You get three sizes in the package. They're jumping everywhere. They're like jumping beans. All right. Oh, there's that other one. And I'll put one there. You can also use tweezers if you have a hard time with the scissor points. Okay. So, um... That's it. Thank you so much for joining me this week for my Spooky Night Suite reveal. Be sure to leave a comment on my blog or Facebook page or YouTube channel. And you must leave a comment by Friday, October 6th at 12 midnight uh, Eastern Time. And I am going to draw one lucky winner from all the comments and you're going to get a treat from this week. All the different treats I've been making, I'm going to choose one and mail it to you. So please let me know if you have any questions, and thanks so much for buzzing. Bye.